God wants to bring us into that place where we emit that fire anointing of Elijah. And in case you don't know the story, it's in 1 Kings 18. Where Elijah was representing God against 450 prophets of Baal. These were idol worshippers. And Elijah stood there as the representative of God. And he says, I want to have a confrontation with you and my God. And any God that shows up by fire, let that God be God. And he gave them the opportunity to call on their God. They built an altar. And they said, call upon your God. And he stood back. And he gave them the opportunity. To, I don't know who I'm talking to. I said, God is here. And they did all their antics and fanatics and their acrobatics. And they called upon their God. And nothing happened. Elijah said, probably your God is sleeping, man. Wake him up. And nothing happened. And Elijah said, well, it's my time to call on my God. I am going to authenticate the dynamic God as Sister Mel spoke about dynamism and dynamite and I'm going to authenticate that my God is dynamic and say, wet up the altar. Soak it. Soak it, make water run down in the trenches. Soak it. I don't need no help. Soak it. Looked up and he said, God, let them know that you are God. And God showed up by fire. Lap up even the water around it. This morning I believe God is asking the question. Are you living in hope? Or are you living by faith? Are you living in hope? Or are you living by faith? What is Philip saying? You see hope is an anticipated expectation but faith is a conviction and that's why Hebrew says now faith is the substance of things hoped for so faith brings substance to your hope you see for that river of water of life to flow from you you can't live in hope for that fire anointing to come upon you, you can't live in hope. You have to live by faith. I hear the Lord drawing me into the book of Daniel. Daniel chapter 3, a well-known story. I said, I mash up my thing and I'm just a draw now. Braka shakata. Huh. 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 In Daniel 3, the Bible talks about three Hebrew boys. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They were under the rulership of King Nebuchadnezzar. And Nebuchadnezzar, he set up, he set up this golden idol again. Yeah. Oh Lord. They say it was about 80 to 90 feet high. Pastor spoke about decrees some week ago. And he signed a decree that says, when the instruments are sounded, everybody must bow down. And worship this golden idol. Huh. But like Elijah, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they knew their God. Huh. Hmm. And so Nebuchadnezzar made this degree that anyone who does not bow down when that instrument is sounded, you shall be thrown into a lake of fire. 
you must bow down to this God. Huh. And so the principals and the magistrates and all those big technocrats under the rulership of Nebuchadnezzar, they realized that any time the sounds of the instrument were sounded, everybody was bowing down. But these three guys, um, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they never subscribe. Them now bow. We now go bow to down idol. And they sent word to King Nebuchadnezzar, say, King, oh King, didn't you set up a decree that anyone who does not bow down to this idol, they should be thrown into the lake of fire? He says, I sure did. He said, well, I've got news for you, King. Those three Hebrew boys that you put over some province in Babylon, and I hear pastor talking about Babylon, so God, you think God is <laughs> God, I tell you, I them mash up my thing, but God, I need the thing back. <laughs> and so they were in charge of some province in Babylon. And King Nebuchadnezzar said, what? Call them forth. Bring them in front of me. And he says, is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that when the sound of the instruments are heard, you don't bow down? <laughs> I like to visualize things and I'm visualizing it now. I believe Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego did something like this. Oh, King Nebuchadnezzar, we acknowledge your kingship, sir. All protocols observed. Bob, you know the thing when you're in a them thing there, you know? All protocols observed, sir. <laughs> We're not going to diss your position. We recognize your kingship, sir. But we have one thing to say. One version puts it, we do not need to be careful in this matter. Another version says, we don't have to defend ourselves in this matter. Mama, 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 mama. He said, the God that we serve, hey, hey, hey. he's able to take us out of that fire and to rest us from your power. Hmm. If he so desires, read it good enough. Him said, even if <laughs> he does not show up, we're not going to bow. <laughs> I said, faith is a conviction, a belief with no proof. No proof, but you believe it. And, they, and he threw them into that lake of fire. In fact, he said, I don't even have to tell you the story, but if in case you don't know it, he said, get the strongest soldier them now and turn up the fire. Turn it up. The fire was so hot that when the soldier carried them, them get burned. So read it. And when he threw them in there, Shadrach, Mishkan, and Bengo, one, two, three. King Nebuchadnezzar stand up on him and say, What is this? What go on here, son? Me know say me throw one, two, three, man in at the fire. But me say four. I said, God shows up. <laughs> when you move from hope and you move into faith. Hope is anticipated expectation. Faith is a conviction. God showed up. And him said, no, sir. Him go to do him say, Shadrach, <laughs> Meshach, and Abednego. Oh, no, all right. Him say, yeah, man, we're good like good. Him say, oh, no, come on. Come, come here. And when him smell them, they didn't have the smell of smoke. Not even a hair swinch on them head. God put his arm. I hear, I see, I hear Sister Alien talk about the eagle. Him just put him big wing around them. Look, look. None touch you now. You know what Nebuchadnezzar said? From no one. See, from no one. Don't touch them, boy. Because them serve a God. That are the real McCoy. This morning. 
God is showing up and let you know that he is the real McCoy. <laughs> 2023 is almost behind us and we anticipate 2024. I think this is an excellent thing that pastor is doing. That we get a preview of where God is going. God wants the stagnant waters in our life to flow away and make rivers of life come. He wants that fire anointing to fill this church, not just some people, but all of us who subscribe to this great God. And so this morning, hmm, hmm, I don't know if your faith is shaky or you're living in the realm of hope. You know what hope says? I know God can do it, but hope always have a, a little conjunction. I know him can do it, you know, but... I know him can help me with my exam, even though I'm not study, but um, the, the, the light bill must be. I mean, no, God, he is a provider, but uh, but you see, faith, faith is, I know what I know that I know that my God is able. No buts, no ifs. I sister Miller and sister Elena, no mash up my thing, you know, mash up my head, <laughs> but I love it. And so this morning. This morning, God wants to not escalate you. Escalation is step by step. God wants to elevate you floor by floor. I want to do a big thing fast. I don't want an escalation from God. I want elevation, Brother Freckleton. Floor by floor. As an engineer, you know what I'm talking about, Brother Richards. Next level. So this morning, I don't know what level you are at. Thank you. God wants to take us to. A preacher came here and he never talked about next level. God wants to take us to the level. The next level might be low to God. Your next level might be God's lowest level. You might be down here when God is up there and your next level is here. God says you still don't even move yet because that's the level. So it's not the next level we want to go in God. We want God to take us to the level. Come on, tell your neighbor, let God take you to the level. Ah, take you to the level. Let that be on your mouth this week. God, take me to the level. Huh. And so we want to assist you in going to that next or that level. By asking you to just examine yourself. You heard the word that has been spoken from the mouthpieces of God this morning. Am I the one who is represented by, and I don't mean to be derogatory, stagnant water, meaning I'm not going anywhere. My wrath does a group on my life. Stench does a emit from my life. Fungus, just take up my life. But I want a washing away. And I want a river of purity to emit from my life. Am I the person who is so hungry for God that I want to go to that level where I have that fire anointing of Elijah? I don't know what level you are at. But this morning, God wants to start or continue the process of taking us to the level. So this altar is open, and the leaders are here. We want to help the body that nobody lags behind as we go into 2024. We want us all to be a unified force. That when we say we're going into the garrison communities, we're going to go dig up where the police can't find the gun them. God going to open with eyes and say, kick down the banana tree there. One, two, three, 16 under the sun. We have to have the eyes.
Dr. Chang must come and say, felt up, we need to know down so and so. We, 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 we need to know as a special squad. I don't even know. God carry me upon some journeys, you know. We need you as a special squad to complement our force. But they will take the lead from you. <laughs> Are you ready? To be enrolled in that special squad. The heads of the, the hospitals, they must come and say, Feltab, we need you to be some, some, some consult, spiritual consultants in the medical field. We have some critical patients here. We need your God. And we can say, Doc, is not what you think is the problem, you know. We diagnose it. And that is that. And when they look, they see that is that. That's where the 21st century church must go. Where are you this morning? Where are you this morning? I'm asking you. Critically analyze what I'm asking you. Where are you this morning? First and foremost, I want to give the opportunity for somebody who don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. That's the first visa you need. Marlette, it was a beautiful example the other day about doors. This is some doors, when them shut, them shut. And you have some doors that can't open. But you see, salvation is a door that is now open. But there's going to come a time when it's shut. It's shut. The door is now open. If I were you, I would take, up, take that opportunity and run with it and run through that door. 